Hello, Steve Cypress here on a little noise, a, the rare vehicle coming up the road. Uh, it is Wisdom Wednesday, November 20, heck, 29th, I believe it is, 2017, 28th maybe. Ah, should have looked it up. I think it's the 29th. Anyway, so. Uh, rhino of the day here in uh, beautiful and again all this week uh, kind of overcast cloudy Arizona but still beautiful temps in the 70s and uh, really having a tough time getting through this time of the year down here uh, just kidding so uh, Rhino of the day is this book called rhinoceros from the our wildlife world and you can probably it's backwards but you can see the photo of the rhino and the book is filled with uh, photos of rhinos. Let's see if I do this. You can see all kinds of great photos of rhinos, and it's a very uh, educational book. I'll just point out two things. In the beginning, you have here some facts about rhinos, class order, species, whatever. And then towards the back here, you have words to know. Speaking of which, how appropriate for today's Wisdom Wednesday tip. It is the most important word to know, although all entrepreneurs know this word. We just don't seem to say it. In fact, I can take out the word seem. Entrepreneurs don't say this word often enough to themselves or to anybody else. And I'll tell you why, and then I'll share the word, and that'll be it for today. Uh, the reason why is because of the nature of entrepreneurs as another vehicle is coming up the road making some noise. Very rare here in the middle of nowhere. So, uh, entrepreneurs, okay, the very definition of the entrepreneur is someone who is always seeking opportunities, who is always looking for solutions to problems. You know, we take resources that other people uh, don't uh, uh, make use of like we do, we rearrange them in ways to make them much more valuable than their, the sum of their parts. Like speaking of vehicles driving on the roads, I mean everyone can drive on a road, the, uh, the general public and the nine to fivers all drive on the road, but entrepreneurs can take those same roads, put them together with trucks, there are lots of trucks too, but they can then put them together with airlines and with airports and that's what Fred Smith did back in 1980, whatever, when he decided to come up with FedEx. Unheard of in those days to have overnight package delivery. Uh, the roads were there, the airports were there, planes existed, trucks existed, carriers existed, envelopes existed. You know, every element existed. But it takes an entrepreneur to have the vision to take all those elements and say, man, if I can combine these in a certain, certain way, I can change the world. I can do something that's never been done. Or on a smaller scale, I can solve problems for people. FedEx solves a lot, still to this day, solves a lot of problems for a lot of people and therefore creates a lot of revenue, a lot of income, a lot of wealth for the people that uh, uh, invest and help run the company. And so that's what entrepreneurs do. We have that vision. We're always looking for solutions to problems. We're always looking for opportunities. And this week, I don't know what happened because I get bombarded all the time with opportunities. But lately, for the past few weeks, I've been overloaded bombarded with opportunities. I mean, people, maybe it's the time of year. People are, like, getting ready to to figure that, hey, 2017 wasn't such a great year for me. What am I going to do to make 2018 better? Or maybe 2017 was fantastic and the economy might be about to turn around after a decade of terribleness and I want to be ready to cash in in 2018 when the boom starts happening. Give you an idea, you've you pretty much waited a little too long. To it's never too late to start, but should have gotten started on that a while ago. Uh, and. If you haven't yet, contact me or somebody else. You want to get positioned uh, now, of course. It's, 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 you've waited too long. You want to get positioned as soon as possible to take advantage of the boom that is happening uh, in the economy. But um, So maybe I've uh, hinted at it, and it's time to break the news. The word is no. That's it. Simple two-letter word. And how can you remember that word? And to say that more often to yourself and to others, being an entrepreneur, where the symbol of the entrepreneur is the rhino, because it's right there. I know this is backwards, but it's right there in the word rhino. The word is no. 
So we tend to want to solve every problem we see and jump on every opportunity we can and leverage as many of our strengths and skills and resources as we can and man can you help me with sure can you do this yeah do you have this yeah do you know this pre yeah can you do this yeah of course we can and that's the danger we need to learn how to say no more often now i'm sure this isn't news to you every entrepreneur ought to know this because you know the feeling when you do the opposite when we say yes to too many things, we're overwhelmed. We're overloaded, and then we can't be our best to any of them. And then, you know, we have that euphoria of saying yes, but then it's really bad if we can't follow through and deliver what we say. And then you lose your integrity, and in business, integrity is everything, and then you're gone, and especially, again, with yourself. So you want to take on opportunities that you can handle. A limited number of opportunities. There's only 24 hours in a day. I know we all like to work a lot and we don't even consider it work. What I do, solving problems for business owners, creating solutions and systems so they have less stress and less work and have floods of leads and business coming in. I mean, that's what I do. That's a joy. Um, but still, it's work. And opportunities come all the time. Can you partner in this? Why don't you partner in that? Check this out. Check that out. And I've spent the last couple of weeks going to more websites and watching more videos and audios and calling more people and talking about this and asking about that. I even flew up to another state and uh, spent a day with executives of a company checking out an opportunity. I mean, I, I will go to lengths to check things out, but then I always got to temper my entrepreneurial vision spirit I can solve all the problems and I love to take on opportunities uh, but I don't love to take on opportunities that that I then can't follow through from so the important thing and that's for all of us is when we say no more we take on fewer opportunities we can give our best we can give more of ourselves and more of our resources our time our energy our thoughts everything to the fewer opportunities we take on. And then down the road, as we build a bigger and a bigger organization, if that's what you want to do, I'm well past that stage of my life, but if that's what you want to do, like Jeff Bezos with Amazon, I mean, he can take on something and say, now you ought to sell these. Oh, okay, let's start another division and another line of, of goods, and let's take on some more and more and more, because he's got layers and layers and layers of people to take care of that. It's not him himself doing it all. As an entrepreneur, we need to be real careful. We need to guard our time. Guard our energy, guard our resources, those are resources, and, and most of all, we got to guard our own self, our own spirit, our own soul, our own gut, whatever you want to call it, our own heart, by not saying yes to too many opportunities and too many things to do because that'll tear at us. I know I've been there, and once in a while, I feel the, the, the danger line getting up to the danger level where I, I got to peel myself back and and my first thought is like oh, I should have said no to some of these things then I just have to say no so that's the other thing if we fill ourselves up and fill all our time and energy and thoughts up with too many opportunities we got no room to say yes to some great that comes along oh man I just can't even look at that because I said yes to too many things nobody puts it that way we just say because I got all this to do well who is it we're our own boss right I always say it's the good news and bad news for an entrepreneur you're your own boss so if you have too much to do and you're overwhelmed whose fault is that it's our fault accept the responsibility oh it's tough when you see the world today which is all full of blaming and excuse making and it's his fault and their fault and you understand and because of this the buck stops with the entrepreneur if you have self-respect you say like hey whose fault is this that I'm overwhelmed whose fault is this that I've got so much to do that I can't even look at another opportunity our fault so the cure to that is to take a step back and to not wait until you say I wish I would have said no to some of these things think that the symbol of the entrepreneur is the rhino and therefore maybe you'll remember to say the word no more often I know I need to and hopefully uh, you're there with me on that and uh, Nathan is here and Nathan says bingo 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 especially holds true with focusing on a niche uh, very good especially exactly I mean and a niche can be anything I mean a niche marketing can be I'm going to you know pick this target who and I'm gonna focus on them but oh I can also help these people and I could also sell this and I could also talk to these people and those people so yeah focus is the key word there it helps on focusing on anything 
And so we want to start with a narrow focus, even though we want to help everybody and do everything, and we know we could. And we want to expand, and we want to scale, and we want to grow, and we want to conquer the world. Start small. Start with what you can handle. And then as you go and you put systems into place, you'll be able to handle more. So you're, you're going to start with what you can handle. You're always going to go with what you can handle. But what you can handle is going to become more and more as you build your business, build your resources, build your team, build your structures, put your systems into place. Then you'll be able to handle more. Try that out in the, all the beginning. You're going to crash. Amazon did not start. I mentioned Amazon earlier. It did not start selling 40 bazillion different items and having warehouses all over the place and, and pretty much taking over the world. Okay, It started with books. That's it. Books. And uh, Macy, uh, you know, uh, Sears started with watches. I've talked about the J.P. Sears on a success story Saturday. Like, started with one item. Then it had the largest catalog in the world, but it didn't start that way. Sam Walton started with one store in Bentonville, Arkansas, not the largest retail chain in the history of the earth. I could go on and on and on, but we got to focus. we got to say no to a lot of opportunities so that we can keep our sanity, keep our energy, our time, all our resources. And then as we grow, if that's what we want to do, we can say yes to more and more things. So that's Wisdom Wednesday for today. And I will be back tomorrow with Throwback Thursday. I'll be on the road. I'm heading up to, uh, heading out to L.A. I'll be at a, a James Malinchak's boot camp for the next four days. Been at it twice. It's always fantastic fun. I meet some great people, hang out with some cool celebrities and speakers and, and James himself. And it, it's always a blast. And James always has fantastic information. It is one of the, if not the best seminars out there, especially when you consider it's one, pretty much one speaker the whole time. Uh, he's just amazing. So I'll be there for four days. I'll come, I'll be coming at you from there with Throwback Thursday tomorrow. And I hope you'll be with me then. I will see you there. Bye-bye.